Hi there folks, hope you're all well. Uh, sorry I haven't been putting up any videos recently. Um, basically just due to weather conditions in the state of the rivers. Um, but what I have been doing is I've been doing a wee bit of fly time and got me thinking. Um, could maybe share some time uh, videos with you. Now this is the first time video I've done. Um, so, just playing it a wee bit be here. Now, I'm no Davy McPhail, but I'll try my best. <laughs> now, it's grayling season, so grayling bugs is what I've been tying. And the one I've got in the vice here is one that I call the Pink Butted Squirrel. It's uh, a reasonably simple pattern, it's one I've been using for a wee while, um, and been tying for a wee while. But, here goes. Just pop a hook in the, in the face. Now the hook we're using is a partridge straight eye. A grub and that's size 12. You can vary the size of the hook uh, to suit your condition, suit your rubber. You can even change the style of the hook, uh, go with one that you got faith in. That's just a shape uh, that I like for this style of fly and it's a hook that I've got a lot of faith in. Now next we're going to uh, the bead is the nymph head tungsten silver and that is 80 an inch or 32mm however you like to, to work it you can vary the the bead size vary the the bead colour um, I certainly do uh, use copper, uh, gold, uh, even black and you can vary the colour uh, colour as well if you want. Now we're going to introduce glow bright number two and that is the floss, not the yarn. Because we've got to be using it for time. Now we'll just start behind the bead and just start bringing that down. A wee turn in front just to lock it. That's fine. Bring in the scissors. Now, I'm going to continue down. Continue down the shank of the hook. And just bring it round the tail bit there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to form a butt with the globe, right? That's fine. Bring it up to the top. Now, I'm going to introduce another thread in a second, but before I do that, I'm going to form a dubbing loop. And that's basically just wrap the, the globe right just round your finger and back up and what you want is a loop size of maybe just say two and a half three inches and a couple of turns here and I'm going to bring it round a couple of times this is hard with a camera in the way and that's that secure so just set that on top of your vise if you've got a materials clip even better now uh, I'm going to bring in the other thread and that is UTC Ultra 70 denier olive now you can whip finish your globe right but I'm not going to because I'm going to I'm just going to lock it in place with this with this thread just one in front, that's fine. 
just trim them, just make sure you don't cut your loop. That's always fun. Now, your, your loops here, now we're going to take this down with the thread just to the butt. That's fine. Now, the next stage is to add some dubbing. And what we're going to use is the indispensable Wopsy Natural Fur. Brilliant range. And this particular one is the Fox Squirrel. Now that's the indispensable part. I don't know what we've done before we had Fox Squirrel, but... I certainly replaced a uh, here's lug in just about all my tines. Now just going to add a wee bit of wax onto the thread. Now that is the tacky wax from Vineyard. one that I like, it's uh, the super tacky, uh, has it's has its good points but it can be a bit, a bit greasy. Just want to lightly dub that on. And slide it up. I'm have to put a wee bit more wax on that. And you don't want it too, too thick. I'm just going to put a wee bit more wax on this for, for when I dub the next bit. You don't want to put it on too thick. Yeah, see, this is, this is quite an effective dubbing. See, really, really spiky. Just building up. Just build up a bit of shape as you go. Tighten up a wee bit. I'm just going to add a wee bit more because I'm going to take it up to just behind. Just behind the bead. Helps jam the jam the bead in place. It's the worst thing for a fly's lifespan if you've got a bead rattling about all over the place. Starts cutting into the thread, etc. And shortens the life. I didn't need all of that. Right, so. Try not to move the camera. These beads have got a wee dimple on them that's meant to represent an eye. Um, to be honest, it's pretty pointless fish. I'm never going to see it, but it's always nice just to just to have them lining up the way they should. I'm just going to wax the thread a wee bit for the next stage. It helps give it a wee bit of grip. Now I'm going to take dubbin spinner. I'm going to take uh, the loop and put the dubbing spinner in just the way you would normally. Just put it in there like that. And I'm going to spin. Now, I could have just used a single strand of this globe right. 
they've been a hell of a lot easier. But the only thing is, I don't have as much faith in it as a single strand. Now, strength wise, it tends to free quite easily. But also, when you double it up and then spin it, it actually compresses it more. I find. You don't need a load of turns on this. I say that's that's more than enough. The last one won't be visible. Just put a couple of turns here behind it, one in front, and then trim that off. I say the last one won't be seen. We're going to cover that up with a wee collar in a second. <coughs> I'm just going to put just put another wee bit of wax on that just in case. I'm going to use Hens Spectra number 45, one of my favourites. Don't need a lot of this. That there will probably do the job. You might as well dub that on. In fact, that there is probably more than enough. Always, you can always take a wee bit of it off and just tighten it up a wee bit. Don't want to let it go too too far down the body. Just want to have it have it basically dubbing it on the spot just behind the just behind the, the bead. And just put a couple of wee turns in there. Now, going to just before we wet finish it, just put a wee bit of glue on. A wee bit of super glue. <coughs> now, that's the, the golf stuff. You just put a, maybe about 10 15 mil on that tape here, wet finish up. Just give it a couple of wee turns before the wet finisher. And I'll just give it about two or three turns. Tighten that down. Now, super glue will get forced right through all the layers of thread and it'll really help lock that in place. Now, that's basically it finished. Now, as I was saying there, the golf stuff, I've used all the other super glues pretty much, it's on the market. Um, the cheap ones the, that you get out of the pound shop and stuff like that, all false economy, waste of time. Uh, the Zappa Gap and Full and Mill ones are good glues, they work really well, but the only th thing I find is, is the... They've not got a good lifespan in the bottle. If you're not using it all in the one at the one time, you sometimes find that you're uh, that you're wasting sort of half a bottle. But have you been using this for a while now? This golf stuff, and it was under recommendation, and it's not let me do yet. But you see that there. A nice wee buggy part, and like I said, been tying it for a wee while now. Um, it's got me some good fish. You can vary it up. Uh, change the colours, change the materials a bit. Um, just to suit yourself, suit your river conditions. Suit your preferences. But, as I say, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'm going to be getting our couple up soon. Cheers.